Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Sechus Shabbos Daf Yud Beis is primarily focused on a comparison of a chutzer, a courtyard, and a mavoi, an alley, as far as what we need to do to allow ourselves to carry within them. There's two primary concerns. There's Eruv, as an Erev Chatzeris, which in Mavois is called Chetufi Mavois, and the other issue is if part of the walls are down or never were built and it is exposed to another area that you're not allowed to cross into while carrying, then we have a problem carrying within this area itself unless we do something to fix it. So the differences between the two are as follows. The Mavoy is always open, usually to a Rosh Hashanah on at least one side, and in order to be able to carry within the Mavoy itself without concern that she'll carry out of the Mavoy or into the Mavoy, we got to do a Lechi, a Kaira, something like that, and that's what we've been discussing through most of the Masech Ta'al and we'll continue discussing it in this daf as well. Now, a Chatzar is slightly different. A Chatzar, you cannot carry from the Chatzar into any adjoining area that you can't carry into. That could be a Shusar Abim, or it could be another Chatzar, where you don't have an air of Chatzeris. Right? You can't carry from one Chatzar to another without an air of Chatzeris. Now, to make it permitted to carry within the Chatzar, you have to make sure that the the space in the wall to the next Chatzar, or to the Shusar Abim, or to whatever's on the other side, you have to make sure that that gap is viewed as a doorway. We don't have the lachas of lechi and kairi here. We have we have to make sure that it's viewed as a doorway and not that the entire wall is considered to be d- d- knocked down so that the two chatseras of the two ears are exposed to each other. So that when we say that you need to have a doorway, we mean that you need to have pieces of wall on either sides of the gap. It can be an entire side. Those pieces of wall are called pasim, and you have to have a pasim on the sides. So, to make it permitted to carry within a mavo, you have to have a lechi, or a kaira, next to its open side. To make it permitted to carry within a chatzar, you have to have pasim on its sides of its opening. And of course, the gaps have to be less than a ten amas, and you have to have an air of chatzeris within a chatzar, and you have to have a shituf in mavois within a mavo. And the Gemara will compare and contrast them. The Gemara will want to know how do you define a chatzar as opposed to a mavo? How do you know if something's a chatzar or a mavo? That's at the end of the daf. Before that, the Gemara discusses the particulars of what you need to do for a mavoi, and the particulars of what you need to do for a chatzar. How many possum do you need? How big did those possum have to be? So let's see the daf. We begin at the last two and a half lines on daf Yud Aleph. The Gemara has just uh, finished bringing a Mishnah, which had a machloka between Meisel, Beishamai, and Rabbi Eliezer, what you have to do for a mavoi. According to Rabbi Eliezer's opinion, it said you need two Lechis, lechayim. So the Gemara says that means two lechis just, or two lechis as far as lechis go, but you also have to have a curry, you also have to have a crossbeam. So Gemara tries to resolve this. Gemara quotes an incident where Rabbi Elazar himself went to visit Rabbi Yezab in Prada, who was his Talmud in a place called Ublin, and he found that he was sitting in a mavoi that only had one lechis. So he said to him, What kind of business? You know what? On hold of this, you gotta have two lechis. So he said, What do you mean? Two lechis? I have to have two lechis? What do I need to do? Stuff up the whole wall so that I can't fit out? So Gemara says, what well, now? If he had, if when he said two lechis, he meant two lechis plus a kaira. So I understand what he means when he's complaining that why do I have to fill up the entire wall? Because two lechis and a kaira is already towards a pesach. The whole thing is closed. But if he's just saying a lechi on this side and a lechi on that side, what's the problem? Why is he calling that? It's, it's as if I have to fill up the whole thing. So the Gemara says, no, that's not a problem. He just meant two lechis without a kaira, without a meme. He just meant two lechis, and he's complaining that it was a very narrow space there. And if he, he held that a lechi has to be three tochem wide at least, which we don't hold of Lamaisa, but that's what he held. And therefore, you already have six tochem, you're already filling up the entrance. Okay, now, the end of that brisa that discussed that story has another statement there. The Gemara now discusses that. And that statement refers back to our mission and says like this. This is where Shem ben Gamliel said that the mechukas between Mesil and Meshamai was only about a mavoi which is greater than four amas, between its, its four amas itself, or four amas to ten amas. That's where Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel argued as to why you have to have Beis Hillel, as we saw in the Mishnah, said you have to have either a lechi or a kaira, and Beis Shammai said you have to have both a lechi and a kaira. Says there, Shimon ben Gamliel, but if you have less than four amas, you don't need anything. Sigmar so says, hold on a second, this doesn't fit with our Mishnah. Our Mishnah had a similar statement in the name of a Talmud who said to Rabbi Akiva, but he didn't say you don't need anything. He said they, they, they both agree you need a lachi or a kaira. Even Rabbi Leazar agrees you need a lachi or a kaira. They all go with the most lenient opinion. They don't say you don't need anything. 
So the Mishnah says, yes, Rashi Ben Gamliel meant the same thing. He meant you don't need anything extra. You don't need anything above the basics. And the basics is either a Lachi or a Kaira. That's what you need. Beishamit doesn't say you need to have both. And Rabbi Eliezer says, and Rabbi Eliezer says you don't have to have an extra Lachi. Now the Gemara continues analyzing the size of the Mavai opening, which requires a fixing. So as we said so far, we learned that if it's greater than a 10 Amas, we saw Rabbi Yehuda says you can still fix it uh, with a Lachi or a Kaira. Um, most opinions, the Chachamim say you need a source of Pesach. If it's 10 Amas all the way down to 4 Amas, that's where the Machlok is built by Shammai, Rabbi Yehuda reply. Less than 4 Amas, everybody agrees you just need a Lachi or a Kaira. How small do you have to go? At what point do you not need anything to fix it anymore? So the Gemara says that Rav Achli, or perhaps it was Rabbi Chil, said, until four Tfachim. Once you're less than four Tfachim, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to fix it at all. Okay, up to now we've been discussing a Mavi and its open side and how you fix it. The Gemara now compares this to the din of a Chatzar and its Pasim. Again, to just remind ourselves, you can't carry within a Chatzar as long as one of its walls is exposed to an area you can't carry into from the Chatzar. The way to fix that is to make that exposed part appear to be a doorway, which means it's less than Tanamis, and it has walls on the sides of the gap, meaning running along in the same direction, running along the gap, you have the gap, and then you have walls even to it on either side, not perpendicular, but along the same length. So Gemara now discusses how much do you need those walls. Those are Pasim, how long do they have to be? How many pasim do you have to have next to the gap in order for it to be permitted to carry within the chatzar? So the Gemara brings a number of opinions of Amiroyim here. The Gemara, first of all, says, Rav Sheish is named Rav Yirmiya bar Abba, in name of Rav, that about this, the Chacham and Magrita, Rabbi Eliezer, you need to have pasim on both sides. Rabbi Eliezer said you need to have lechis on both sides by a mavoy. As far as the chatzar, they agree you need to have a pas on both sides. Rav Nachman says they don't agree. But here, the halach is like Rabbi Eliezer, you do have to have pasim on both sides. Now this seems to indicate that Rav Nachman and Rav Sheshes argue as to what the Chachamim hold, but they agree that halach alamaisi, you need pasim on both sides. The Gemara brings a version of their discussion where they don't argue. Rav Nachman by Yitzchak says, no, no, no. When Rav Sheshes said that the Chachamim agree, he was referring to that Rebbe agrees. And when Rav Nachman said that they don't agree, he was referring to that the Rabbanon who argue on Rebbe don't agree. Because we know there's a machlok is between Rebbe and the Rabbanon. Rebbe says you need to have walls on both sides of the gap for a chatzar. You need to have two pasim. And the Chacham say you only have to have one pas. And uh, therefore, that's who Rav Nachman and Rosh were referring one to Rebbe, one to the Chacham, and they're not arguing with each other. Okay? Good. Further. Next, what does Rebbe Yechanan hold? How many pasim do you need, and how big do they have to be? So Ravasi quotes Rebbe Yechanan, who says that you need to have two Pasim. You need to have space one on each side of the gap. You can't have the gap ending at the perpendicular wall on either of the sides. Um, so now Rav Zera says, how could, uh, how, how could you say that you need two? But we have a different statement that you have said in the name of Rav Yechanan that says that all you need to have is four Tfachim. You need a you have to have a pas, which is four tvachim. Now, maybe you'll tell me, yeah, four tvachim, but four tvachim on both sides. That can't be, because a classic example of the chatzar with its pasim is when you have a big chatzar adjacent to a small chatzar sharing a wall, and that that shared wall fell down. And the only pasim you have are the big chatzar has the parts of wall which are wider, which it is wider than the small chatzar. It's a case we've been discussing for quite a few daf. And over there we had said that Rav Adas Bar Avdimi said in Rav Chanina that the larger chutzur is only greater than the small chutzur by one amma, which means six tvachim, which means you have three tvachim on either end. So how could you tell me that you got to have four tvachim on either end? We see that you only have to have three tvachim on either end. What must be that you only have to well, that when we say the number four tvachim, it means four tvachim on only one side. Four tvachim on only one side, so that means that contradicts what well, you just quoted, Rav Yechanet. You have to have a pass of some sort on both sides. So that's a kasha. So Gemara says when Rav Zera came up from traveling in Medina Siam, he explained it as follows. He said Rav Yechanet holds both. He says you could have one side which is four tvachim, or you could have a pass on both sides, and then it doesn't have to be four tvachim. It just needs to be a mashu any size at all. Okay, next, what does Shmuel hold? 
So the Gemara has Rav Yosef in the name of Rav quotes Shmuel, and he says you have to have only one pass. Yeah, you only have to have wall on one side of the gap. So Abai asked, Abai was the Talmud of Rav Yosef. Abai asked, how could you say that? Um, but I have a different quote of Shmuel. I have a different quote of Shmuel. He's brought by Rav Hanani Bar Shila, who said that Shmuel told him that you can't paskin that a chutzer is okay unless you have either two pasim or the majority of the whole side of the chutzer is existing, meaning the wall that the gap is in has majority filled in. It's the majority of the wall is still there, and the gap is a minority of the wall. So Rav Yosef said, look, I don't know the answer to your question, but I'll tell you what happened. There was a village of shepherds, and there was a chatzar there, and the, actually the yam, the sea, came in and knocked down the wall of the chatzar and came into part of the chatzar. And they went and asked Rav Yehuda what to do, and he said, as long as you have one pass, as long as you have wall still existing on one end of the gap, that's fine. So you see that you only have to have one end of the gap, and that's Rav Yehuda. Rav Yehuda was in the name of Shmuel. So Abai said that's different, that's different. That's because there's water there. Whenever there's water, Chazal made more lenient rules in order to allow people to draw water. Right? We see that Alacha, we've seen it in the Masachas Shabbos, and we'll see it again here in Masachas Erevin, that you're allowed to draw water even if you have hanging walls. That means you have walls that don't extend all the way to the ground, such as if you have a building that's partially collapsed, the ground floor collapsed, but the upper floor is still standing, or you have a frame outside your window that has walls that don't reach all the way down to the ground, and you want to draw water by lowering a bucket down through that frame or out of the upper floor of the partially destroyed house in order to be able to draw water, you're allowed to do that because we made special leniencies to allow you to draw water. So that's why in the case of the sea that came into the yard, they made a leniency to allow people to take the water, to, to consider the water within their yard, not to consider the water part of the sea, which is a caramel, and then you can't bring it in. So, they're the special rules. You can prove any halachas from there. So, so, so the Gemara says, okay, fine. Here, but we still have a steer here. We still have a place where Shmuel said that you have to have two walls. And we still have a place where Shmuel said you only have to have one pass. So, uh, which is it? So, the Gemara says that Rav Papa and Rav Papa Yeshua came and they said the explanation is as follows. It's either one. Either you have to have one side, which is four tvachim wide, or you have to have a little bit on both sides, just like we said in the Emperor of Yechanan. The Gemara says then, the only problem is that if our Papa is right, that you need to have four Tvachim on one side, then why does Shmuel say you have to have the majority of the entire side? You don't need the majority of the entire side, you only need four Tvachim. And if you want to say he's referring to a case where that majority is less than four Tvachim, meaning, let's say, the entire side of the Chatzar is only seven Tvachim, so the majority wouldn't be four Tvachim, it would be less, it would be only three and a half, so then... Why do you have to have even three and a half? You don't need a majority. You only need three. Three and a bit. Because if the whole thing is four tvachim, if the whole side of the chatzah is seven tvachim, the gap, when it's less than four tvachim, then when the gap is less than four tvachim, you don't need anything. Remember we had halacha earlier in the daf, where Rav Achlai or Rav Yechiel said that if the gap is less than four tvachim, you don't have to do anything about it. You just leave it. So, we have no explanation for where this majority of the wall is from. If it's if the gap is less than four tvachim, you don't need anything. If it's greater, so then you don't need a majority of the wall. You just need four tvachim of wall, four tvachim of pas. So, the Gemara gives two answers. The Gemara says either that Rav Achlai's halacha doesn't apply here. He was talking about a mavoi. As far as the chatzar goes, if the gap is less than four Tvachem, you still have to have a pass. It doesn't help you. Or, Rav Achlai's halacha is a machlek tanaim itself. Not necessarily agreed. And uh, we are not specifically following that halacha. Shmuel here is not following that halacha. Okay, on the subject of uh, Yam, the sea, which enters the Chatzar, the Gemara quotes a brisa that says that if the sea enters your Chatzar and it knocks down the wall and the gap is greater than uh, 10 Amas, so now you can't fill up your bucket from that water, because you don't have a wall. So the Gemara says, I can't fill up my bucket from the water, that's because the water is a caramelist. But the, that means that you're telling me I'm allowed to carry within my chutzer. Well, why should I be allowed to do that if I now have a gap of 10 amas? The Gemara says, we're talking about where the wall is still standing. 
in the water, meaning the yam flooded over the lower parts of the wall. It's still standing, it's just not visible. Therefore, I can't take from the yam, but I still have a wall uh, to some extent that's blocking people from walking in and out of my chatzar, and um, therefore I'm allowed to carry within the chatzar itself. Okay, the Gemara now opens a new subject, which is when we fix a mavoy by installing a lechi or a kaira, how does that work? Does it form a wall? The lechi or the kaira function as a wall, or they function as just a sign? An indication to remind people that this is a mavoy, that's for Shasarabim, you can't carry from one to the other. So the Gemara arrives at this topic somewhat roundabout, the Gemara quotes Rav Yehuda and the Gemara quotes Rava. Both Amaraim who argue about it. And uh, they're also discussing a different subject. So what's being discussed here is the following thing. A Rishus HaRabim, Rishus HaYachid De'Eraisa. Rishus HaYachid Mid'Eraisa. How many walls does that need? There's a range of opinions. From four walls to three walls to two walls. Could be that only two walls is Rosh Hashanah de Raisa. So we open with a statement of Rav Yehuda, who seems to be discussing what's defined as Rosh Hashanah de Raisa. And we're going to have to revise what he says. So, first of all, he says as follows He says that if you have a Mavoy without a Shitufi Mavois, without an area of Chatseris, so it's a Mavoy that's got three walls and there's no area of Chatseris. So it's got three walls, yeah? And then you fix it by adding a device, either a Lachi or a Kaira. So did you make this into a Rishas HaYachid Da'iraisa now? So Rav Yehuda seems to say as follows. If you put a Lechi, so that's a fourth wall, and if you were to throw an object from Rishas Rabim into this Mavoy, you just transferred from Rishas Rabim to Rishas Yachid Da'iraisa, and now you're Chayev Tzanisa Da'iraisa, you have to bring a carbon. If, however, you put up a beam, so that's just a reminder that doesn't count as a fourth wall, and therefore you, there is no iser de raisa, you don't have to bring a carbon. So from here we see a few things. We see that Rabbi Yehuda holds, first of all, that the lechi counts as a wall, and the beam just counts as a sign. Okay, that's how he splits it up. He also holds that you need to have four walls in order to be Rosh Yachid Midei Raisa. The problem with what he said is that what does an Erev Chaseris have to do with anything? An Erev Chaseris, Shetufei, Mavais has got nothing to do with this. That doesn't change whether it's Rosh Yachid or Rosh so the Gemara therefore has to redefine what he says. And the Gemara says when he says, she too fame of voice, Erev Chatseris, he means a Mavoy which is able to have a sheet of voice, meaning a Mavoy that is closed on three sides. He was referring to a Mavoy which does not have a sheet of voice, meaning which is not able to have a sheet of voice, meaning that it's a Mavoy Mufolish and it's open on its two ends. It only has two walls. Therefore, your lechi or kaira that you're building might potentially make a third wall, which means Rabbi Yehuda holds as follows. He holds that a Rishos HaYachid Midoy Raisa has three walls. Here you have two existing walls. And he's telling you that when you have a lechi, that's a third wall. And therefore, if you throw into this Mavi from Rishos HaRabim, it's in his Raisa. But if you don't have a lechi, you just have a kaira. That's not a wall. That's just a sign. And just a reminder, then if you throw into this Mavoy, it's not a Rishos HaYachid Raisa, and you didn't violate any Yisr. So we see from here... As far as the discussion as to how a lechi or kaira work, the Rav Yehuda holds that a lechi functions as a wall and a kaira functions as a sign. Now, that's Rav Yehuda's opinion. Ravo disagrees. Ravo says they are both a sign. Neither of them functions as a wall. Okay, now the Gemara has two kashas on Ravo. The first one is a proof that a lechi counts as a wall. So Yaakov Bar Abba quotes a brisa that says, if you throw an object into a mavoi, if it has a lechi... Then it is a Rishas Yachid, and you violated an Isser De Raisa. So you see that a Lechi counts as a wall. So Rav says you have to slightly revise this. It's not exactly how you read that. It's not as if it has a Lechi, but if it just needs a Lechi to make it permitted to carry within it. Meaning, it's what? It's a Mavi Sasum that has three walls already. And three walls is a Rishas Yachid De Raisa. That's what the Brysa said when it. That's what the Bryson meant when it said if it has a lechi. If it's a mavoy sasum, so it has three walls. If, however, it needs more than a lechi to fix it, meaning it's a mavoy mafulish, it only has two walls, then it's a rishos ha- Then it's not a rishos hayachid midah raisa, and if you throw something into it from rishos harabim, it didn't violate any iser. But really, certainly, the lechi itself doesn't function as a wall. The Gemara's second kasha is from a statement of Rabbi Huda. 
Rabbi Yehuda the Tana in a Mishnah, who, this is a case we had before, somebody who owns two houses across from each other, across Rishos Harabim. And Rabbi Yehuda says, that's enough to count as a Rishos Hayachet, as long as you put either two lechis or two beams. That, that seems to indicate that Rabbi Yehuda is saying that if you just put a lechi or a beam, that makes a third wall, or even a fourth wall. Uh, so you see that a lechi and a beam counts as a wall. Even the Chachamim who argue, they only argue because they say you can't make an Erev around the Rishos Harabim. But they still agree that it counts as the wall. So Gemara says, no, 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 that's not what's going on up here. Rabbi Huda's not saying you need a third or a fourth wall. Rabbi Huda says two walls is enough. That's why this is okay. He just says you need the Lechi to take off an Iser de Rabbanon that you have over there. Okay, now the Gemara discusses how do you identify a Mavoy versus a Chatzar. What is the difference between a Mavoy and a Chatzar so that we should know if you need a Lechi, if you need a Cairo, or if you need Pasim or one Pas? So pretty much the bottom line is as follows. A Mavoy is longer than it is wide. That means when you're entering on its open side and you're looking straight ahead, it stretches further ahead in front of you than it does from side to side. If, however, it's square, or it's wider on the sides than it is to its back wall, that's a chatzar. And the Gemara says it's halacha, the Gemara brings a few opinions that all agree, that you can't use a lechi for that, and you can't use a kair for that, you have to have a Pass. The Gemara says, why can't a lechi function as a pass? The Gemara says, a pass has to be four tvachim. We said that. Rabbi Echelen said, Rabbi Asi quoted, Rabbi Echelen, it's got to be four tvachim. It's not enough for it to just have a lechi there. Now the Gemara quotes Rabbi Nachman, who adds more details to defining a chatzar and a mavoy. And he says as follows, a mavoy has to be longer than it is wide, and it has to have a minimum of two chatzars and a minimum of two houses. Um, the Gemara says, he continues and he says, what is a chatzar? A chatzar is square. The Gemara says, square, what do you mean? What if it's round? The Gemara says, yeah, round's also fine. What I mean is, square, as opposed to being longer than it is wide, as opposed to being a rectangle. How much longer than wide does it have to be? So Shmuel says it has to be twice as long as it is wide. Rav said to Shmuel, that's not correct. Uh, Chavivi, my Beloved, meaning his uncle, Rabbi Chia, said to him that it doesn't have to be twice as long, even if it's just a little bit longer than it is wide, that's already enough to make it a mavoy and not a chatz. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.